Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the relationship between the back squat and the good morning. And this is something that I think people lose sight of when they, they talk about how squatty a movement is. They'll talk about a deadlift or they'll talk about a good morning squat or whatever. And what people don't understand is that all squats are a hip hinge. Okay, let me state that again. All squats in which there's a barbell on top of your back is a hip hinge movement. Absolutely is. However, it's only slightly a hip hinge depending upon the type of squat. But there's still hip extension involved. And when you understand this perspective, you understand that the squat and hip hinge are a continuum. Right? It's not, this is a squat, this is a hip hinge. Because we think of a good morning, how, what is a good morning? It is a hip hinge with a barbell loaded on your back. However, good mornings are on the other extreme of the continuum, meaning they're they're more hinged than they are squat. But we need to be very, very clear here that the squat itself is actually a hip hinge. And look at the movement. Like if you guys watch a squat, watch what the hips do. And then watch the good morning you're, you're seeing me do. Doesn't your hips and torso do the exact same thing on a squat? Meaning, look at the bottom of a good morning, any good morning to where you still keep the back in extension and you're, you're purely hinging the hips and pushing back. Look at the thigh angle, the femur angle relative to the spine. It looks exactly like a deep, deep squat. They're the same position. Right, the difference between a good morning, so then therefore we can conclude that all squats are a good morning. Okay, they are. So people who who talk about good morninging a squat oftentimes don't understand, uh, you know, what they're talking about. They really don't. They're they're not looking at the biomechanics, and they don't know what a squat or a good morning is. But when we understand it from this perspective, we understand how training the good morning has carryover to the squat. And here's what I mean. Look at the muscles involved. Look at the angles involved. The only difference is the amount of knee flexion. How much do your knees bend? That's it. That's where the continuum is between the two. So that's where the difference is on that scale. So if you think of you know, a astagrass Olympic squat or front squat to where you keep your chest completely up is the farthest end of the squat scale and a full range of motion good morning as the other end of the scale. Most squatting kind of falls in between, particularly power squatting. And look at the squats that you just watched me do. I took all these from the same session because I'm using the same stance. My stance looks the same on these squats and good mornings with the same bar. Looks the same. My hip movement is the same. So what does that mean in terms of muscles used? That means the only muscles used heavily in the squat that isn't used as a massive primary mover in the good morning is the quad. Now, what will people say? Well, you know, the quad is really important to the squat. It is. It's the third most important muscle. And people get upset. They're like, what? How could you say that? Quads are everything. They're not everything in the squat. They're the third most important muscle by a small margin. That's pretty dang important. Especially when we're talking about an exercise that uses such a massive number of large muscles. I mean, a barbell back squat uses a ton of muscles through the body. Both as primary movers and stabilizers. Okay? So, again, when we understand it from this perspective, the only difference is the amount of quad used. And the good morning uses other muscles at a higher priority, of course. All right? It uses way more hamstring, for example, than a squat does. And I would say largely that's one of the largest differences. Uses more hamstring. Considerably more. Squat uses considerably more quad. They both use both. The emphasis is shifted due to the amount of knee travel involved. All right. How does that translate over? 
Well, that means if you get strong at the good morning, your squat is going to be very, very strong. You will not miss squat lockouts, that's for sure. Means if you miss a squat, it's going to be right out of the hole or right above parallel if your quads can't be used. But a lot of times that sticking point, we can use our hips to externally rotate and blast through it, in which case a good morning will carry you. And here's how important that distinction is. I've taken conjugate lifters, and I'm not saying I do this at all of them because everyone's like, oh, a lot of your people are doing machine work like they are. You see a lot of my clients in blogs do leg presses, belt squats, all that stuff who do conjugate. Your people are absolutely right. I have built multiple 500 pound squatters who their quads did not ever seem to be a weak link in their squat. And you never see it with a sub 400 squatter. I have never had to quad specialize in a sub 400 pound squatter ever to get their squat past 405. And what do I mean by that? We literally just do max effort and then speed boxes. That's their quad work. I can take it further if they drag a sled. Take it further if they drag a sled. And here's the other thing. Some of my guys who have the biggest quads don't even always have the biggest squats. Again, hate to be the bearer of bad news. And it's not my opinion. This is what the research shows, the growth research. Quads don't even grow the most from squatting. Your glutes and your adductors grow more than the quads do from Olympic style shoulder with squatting okay that is what the hypertrophy studies have found so accordingly what i have found is that i've taken lifters and gotten them to a 500 pound back squat doing speed boxes and getting really 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 strong at good mornings and here's what i find if you can good morning a weight you can always squat that weight I have not found any exceptions with any of my lifters as long as they do some speed boxes or some sled drags or both. I have never found a lifter that I've coached who can't squat at least equal to or more than their good morning. Now the closest extreme I've seen, I had a guy, one of those guys who we got really, really, really good at the good morning. He was such, used quads so little in his squat, they were so de-emphasized, we didn't do any quad work. I got him to a 500 pound good morning. And then he walked in and squatted 505 on a back squat. But how did we build it? Posterior chain work, good morning variations, rotating bars, occasionally using bands. Right? We built his good morning monstrously big. We built it monstrously big. We did some extra hamstring work to feed the good morning. He didn't have a reverse hyper, but he had a glute ham race. But he was a wide stance power squatter. And because of that, we didn't have to do the other stuff. And people say, well, 505 squat's good. Yeah, he wasn't my body weight. He was lighter. Okay, so on a pound for pound basis, he was a monster guy was 175 pounds. I've taken other lifters and got them to a 500 real fast who were bigger guys who were over 200 who use the same squat stance. Good mornings will build it. That's the relationship we're looking at here. Now, am I not saying that some people need quad? Sure, if you want a truly elite squat, you probably do need some, some quad work. Absolutely. You're just trying to get to a 500 squat? As a healthy young man who's willing to bulk? Probably not. You can focus largely on the good morning and get there and it will carry over to your deadlift also. So that's what I mean by the relationship between the two. The good morning will literally carry and build the squat. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.